Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Good to see you. Oh, so I hope everybody uh, had a, a good week. It's been it's been a very hot week here for Maine, uh, at least in this area, because uh, <clears throat> you know we had uh, mostly every day was like 90 degrees or something like that. So you know, and plus the humidity kept climbing. Uh, it's, you know, it's like, you know, it's still kind of hot right now, but not as bad as it was during the middle of the week. So, uh, it is getting cooler, but, you know, speaking of weather, we got a hurricane that's being tracked to possibly heading into Maine, into Bangor area, uh, Hurricane Lee. Uh, they've been keeping a pretty close eye on it. Uh, it's been uh, raised to a category five, I believe. And uh, they, in, in just one, not even a day, in just like a few hours, it went from 80 mile per hour, 80 miles per hour winds to 178 mile per hour winds in just a few hours uh, down in the Atlantic. Um, and that's the reason for that is because the Atlantic Ocean down towards the Gulf and Florida and all that, it's like a hundred and something degrees, the ocean, okay? And that's just you know on the surface of the water which is normally not that high um, but they're hoping that the, the the winds and everything will die down some by the time it gets further north and starts hitting the colder waters up this way but we could still get some substantial winds uh, regardless uh, even a even a category three could do a lot of damage in this town because I mean we're not set up really for for hurricanes uh, uh, you, even though we should be by at this point because we've been getting a lot of high winds during the seasons when they change and stuff like that um, so it is coming up this way so I don't know you know if it's gonna actually uh, they're hoping that it's gonna uh, you know like you know here's Florida they're hoping that it's gonna come in you know way into the land and then swerve up that way so that way it stays off the ocean and might slow it down you know the winds um, otherwise, you know, they're thinking that, you know, where here, this is Florida, you know, that it's just going to swerve right in and just touch the coastline and all the way up the East Coast. And, of course, Bangor sits pretty close to the uh, coastline. Uh, we're just like 20 minutes from the water, I think, as if you're, if you're driving down that way. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, I mean, we haven't had a hurricane hit the state in quite a while, but it's not unheard of. And, you know, if this one hits, it could be the worst one that we've had here uh, in years. So, I mean, it's just, uh, we're, we're keeping our fingers crossed because there are the people are already telling everybody now, at this point, go out and get extra water and candles and food and stuff like that because we could lose the power here for, you know, maybe a couple of days in some spots or even longer, depending on how far inland it comes. So, you know, it's just it's one of those things it's all part of this uh, global warming phenomena here that's happening and uh, like I said the, the the increased temperatures of the oceans has contributed to the intensity of the hurricanes that's been coming towards Florida you know in the Gulf <coughs> region down that way so when you got waters that are like a little over 100 degrees that's pretty bad you know, you can easily get a, a Category 5 hurricane out of that alone. I mean, we may have to reinvent the whole 
uh, <coughs> severity level of these hurricanes. There could be a six, a category six one day, you know, who knows? Um, but there is, a, you know, <coughs> there is a trend going on in the oceans and the waters are warmer than they should be. In fact, a lot of uh, uh, fish, uh, fish life in the ocean has been impacted pretty bad. Uh, over the increased temperature of the waters, I mean, uh, and, you know, how, how long do you think that's going to, you know, uh, you know, keep going on until, you know, until there's nothing left in the water, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, you think about those fishes that kind of stay close to the surface of the mammals and stuff that stay close to the surface. I mean, the waters are going to be extra hot. They're all going to want to move further north, right? You know? So that means a lot of areas in the south are going to have an impact in fishing and stuff, you know, uh, where fish are just not going to stay down there. They'll be migrating like the birds do. Uh, so I don't know. It, this is this is really all new things, new territories uh, that we're, we're going into. And it's something that, you know, everyone's going to have to pay close attention to uh, as we go forward here into this uh, era of... Uh, natural disasters or maybe I could call them unnatural <laughs> since they are man-made uh, it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with nature it's just man's interference with nature that has caused this increased uh, strength in uh, heat and cold and winds and tornadoes and you know floods <laughs> rain <laughs> all these things <laughs> so I don't know about it uh, any of you but if you've been watching any news at all or stuff, uh, and I'm not talking about news like uh, on the internet, okay? Um, but if you've been watching just your regular news that you watch every day, like CBS and all that, you probably noticed that, you know, they're already starting to poll things now between uh, Trump and Trump, okay? Which I think is kind of... It's like, well, it's like polling for an election that's not going to happen for another 10 years. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, you know, what's the point right now? So many things could happen between now and election day that could change everything, right? So why poll, why start polling now? And I think it's because, you know, there's money involved in that. You know, people, the media is all about sensationalism. It's all about drawing in the crowds, drawing in the attention. To get people to watch because they got advertisers that they got to answer to they got you know they have to get people watching their channel so wheel out the fucking uh polls you know and start getting people riveted into this thing um at the same time it's also influencing opinions before before the matter is even needed to be made an opinion of but one of the other bad parts about this is that uh, they're already trying to label Biden as somebody who isn't really that interesting, okay? Um, and I think that kind of reveals a little bit about the true uh, background of our media, okay? That, you know, it doesn't really want people to know the truth or try to understand, you know, the realities of things. And so they, in the interest of making money for their sponsors, they, they'll say anything, okay? And Fox News isn't alone in that. I mean, they, Fox News goes further out on the limb than the other networks do, but they all, they're all to blame. They all do the same damn thing, okay? And that's sad because it takes away from us or limits us to who we can trust to tell us what's really going on, okay? It's really hard to figure out which one we can really turn to. Because if you're not aware of what's going on, okay, uh, then you're going to be misinformed uh, if you hear anything about what's going on, okay? Because if you're not keeping up to date, if you're not digging into the backstories of every story you hear, you know, you have to, you really have to take that extra effort, you know, to do your own kind of background. And I think any journalist that has retired, <laughs> Uh, from television anchors and all stuff, you know, you know, like Dan Rather. I think they would all tell you the same damn thing. Don't trust everything they tell you on there. Do a little bit of your own digging, okay? Uh, read other other points of view on it and form your own opinion, okay? Um, 
but you got to know you got to know these things is better than the anchors do that tell you I mean all the when you turn tune into the news if you don't already know about what's being discussed on there before they even talk about it then you're not keeping up to date that's what I know because because I'm always got my nose in the in the uh, news and stuff like that by the time six o'clock rolls around and they start talking about the news of the day I'm already ahead of them because I already know I already read the news of the day <laughs> unless there's something breaking happening uh, there's no point uh, for me to watch the regular news because I've read it you know from many different sources already and I already know what CBS's or NBC or ABC's uh, position is going to be on any of these subjects because they've already made their their voices heard online right because they've got their own people that write these things out um, there's no point in me watching the local news or anything any of the news here because I hear I read it and see it already you know so you know I I you won't find me watching you know the traditional evening news after dinner news or whatever you know you won't find me watching that because uh, most of it is already stuff I already I already know about <clears throat> and they're and sometimes they're already behind <laughs> uh, because with their with the new things come out about the story they don't really put it out there yet until they verify things about it um, but you know I've already I already know what it is they're trying to verify so in in the point of polling and stuff before the fact way before the fact okay this article from vanity fear was had come out written by molly jong fast and it's in, uh, <clears throat> entitled can joe biden ride quote unquote boring to re-election um do you want my most subversive hot take uh, a friend recently asked me over dinner. I nodded, as a writer can never say no to a question like that. Quote, Biden is the best president of our lifetime, unquote. They might be right, despite being very much on the fence about Joe Biden and the 2020 Democratic primary, and even writing a Washington Post piece saying he should drop out after he lost primaries in Iowa and New Hampshire. I have come around to the 46th president, impressed with the sheer amount of prog progressive legislation the administration has championed from infrastructure to climate to prescription drugs but a lot of people haven't come around to the president who has struggled with donald trump level approval ratings uh, despite seeming to have pulled off a post-pandemic soft landing for the economy with uh, strong job growth cooling inflation and fading recession chatter Yet this financial marvel is not reflected in Biden's poll numbers. A Wall Street Journal poll found that 58% of voters say the economy has gotten worse over the past two years, whereas only 28% say it has gotten better, and nearly three in four say inflation is headed in the wrong direction, unquote. Uh, quote, I've never seen this big of a dis disconnect between how the economy is actually doing and key polling results about what people think is going on, unquote. Heidi Scherholz, president of the Economic Policy Institute, told the New York Times. The question is not only why does Biden not get more credit for his economic recovery, but also why does the media seem so deeply disinterested in the impact of Biden's presidency? I think these two phenomena are linked. Biden world's biggest problem is likely also its superpower, its boringness. This past week, I was interviewing Franklin Foer about his new Biden biography, The Last Politician, for my Fast Politics podcast, and we got into the subject of the president's major win in negotiating prescription drug costs, a result of the Inflation Reduction Act. This is something that multiple presidents have promised and none have ever achieved. If it works, it will be one of the very few times in American history where the government has won against the lobbyists, or, for lack of a better term, the D.C. quote-unquote swamp, <laughs> which I seem to remember a certain former guy complaining about, yeah, Donald Trump. Uh, it's a change the Times noted, quote, that the uh, pharmaceutical industry and Republicans have opposed for decades, unquote. Uh, George W. Bush authorized the creation of Medicare Part D nearly uh, 20 years ago, but it wasn't until the IRA that the government could negotiate lower prices 
on both Medicare Part D and Part B drugs. Last week, the Biden administration announced that Medicare had selected 10 drugs on which to negotiate. One of them, Entresto, which people take for heart failure, could no longer cost about $713 for a month's worth of pills. Such negotiation could lead to a sea change in the way elderly people live. Quote, we know that 80% of the public is with us, unquote. Senator Amy uh, Klobuchar told the Times, adding that the IRA would be key to her 2024 re-election campaign. The Biden administration's attempts to rein in drug prices could prove widely unpopular, uh, could be proved widely popular with votes if they're aware of them. But you probably didn't spend the weekend reading about these negotiations, just like you might have missed Biden's big Camp David meeting last month with Japanese and South Korean leaders, which the Washington Post described as, quote, another major step toward the establishment of a new trilateral alliance that could help all three nations cope with the growing threats from North Korea and China in a world destabilized by the Russian invasion of Ukraine, unquote. However, you probably caught how Florida governor and 2024 wannabe Ron DeSantis refused to hear uh, to tour Hurricane Idalia damage with Biden, a story that seemed to dominate the news cycle over the Labor Day weekend. Surely, more than the president's touting of his administration's actions to protect workers. The problem for Team Biden is that its superpower, its ability to slide under the radar while getting a lot done for the American people, may also be its Achilles heel, holding back the administration from getting the credit it deserves. Whether negotiating drug prices with Big Pharma, helping fund the building of semiconductor factories, or investing in cleaner forms of energy, the Biden administration is doing a lot of positive stuff for Americans. Yet, certain initiatives, like spending hundreds of millions of dollars on broadband for rural com uh, communities, can get easily drowned out by Republicans threatening to shut down the government or calling to impeach Biden for some reason. It's not that boringness can't win elections, as Wisconsin Governor Tony Evers can attest. Quote, boring wins, unquote, he declared after winning re-election in 2022 by 3.4 points, which could be considered a landslide in such an evenly split state. And in a way, we've been here before. Quote, it was a key theme Joe Biden's 2020 campaign, understated but powerful, and a vivid contrast with the public train wreck incumbent, if elected, he was going to be boring, unquote. Michael Schaefer wrote last year in Political, quote, promise kept, unquote. But one problem with Biden's quote unquote boring plan heading into 2024 is that the news media, uh, not only is the media more interested in covering Trump world than Biden world, but it seems like journalists are somewhat resentful toward the current administration for its disinterest in playing ball these past few years. Remember, Trump world was filled with blockbuster leaks. And while White House feuds were leading to increased subscriptions, uh, subscriptions and sky-high ratings, the Trump bump, as we call it, the media became addicted to the constant excitement and danger of Trump. Uh, Guardian media columnist Margaret Sullivan wrote in an email, quote, Biden offers something apparently far less compelling, decency, sanity, and a sense of reasonable calm, unquote. <laughs> and uh, forewarns of the media overcorrecting from the Trump years, quote, all the coverage of Trump was very emotional, unusually impassioned, and rightly so, unquote, he told me, quote, but I find the press is overcorrecting for that in its coverage of Biden. There's a drive to reassert authority and objectivity, which leads them to be quiet, a quite rogue on the current guy, unquote. So, yeah, I mean, that, that, that's kind of what I feel like has been going on. It's like, uh, you know, Biden does all these things, and the only time they ever, you know, you ever see Biden is if he trips and falls or some goddamn thing that, you know, gets everybody laughing. Uh, but, you know, he does some something really extraordinary, and you don't hear a peep about it unless you listen to, uh, you know, commentators uh you know on the news outlets or something like that uh people always got an opinion about things that'll be the only place you'd hear it but with donald trump he's never had a problem garnering attention from the very first when he was running for president 
his rallies were the stuff of media attention. The things he would say was always a, in the forefront of the of the press. Um, no matter how outlandish and racist and insultive he could be, it was all printed right out there for the world to look at. And I don't remember a whole lot about Hillary Clinton's uh, coverage, except that uh, they seemed to have the cameras in the right place at the right time to catch her when she was being, you know, argumentative or a shrill or, you know, or some, you know what I'm saying, just somebody that, you know, doesn't seem like a person you'd want to be around, okay? Um, so I'm not sure that the Democrat Party at that time and Hillary Clinton really had a chance with the press because the press was in love with Trump. And, 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 and it seems like they still are, okay? And again, it goes back to ratings, money. You know, uh, you've got people that that are selling stuff on their stations and they have to sell and they got to make money doing it. And so that means these people are going to be there uh, to catch the most uh, charged lightning bolt that they can get their hands on. And if it happens to be Donald Trump, then that's who they're going to focus on. That's why everybody knows it's a foregone conclusion that uh, Trump's going to be the uh, Republican uh, select uh, for the uh, actual run for the presidency. Now, let's uh, putting all that aside for a minute. Uh, people are already kind of making an argument about whether or not his name should be on the ballot, okay? And one of the th one of the reasons I heard somebody say was that uh, as it stands right now, uh, they haven't convicted Trump on anything other than the rape thing, you know, that happened, okay? They may have mountains of evidence. They got people coming forward, talking, but we haven't gone to trial yet. And until they have a trial, and until they have a conviction, there's no reason in the world why his name can't be on the fucking ballot. Well, here's my response to that. So let's say you're right. Let's say we put his name on the ballot. Then he goes to trial, goes through that, we see all the evidence, and then he's convicted. Then what happens? The ballots are already printed. You know what that means? It means people are going to put their, put their X by his name when they shouldn't. Okay, my answer to that problem is this. Every time there's a ballot that's printed, there's always a space to write in a name. Okay, and if you want to be the, the ass that wants to put a criminal back in the White House, then you go ahead and put his name down and put your ex next to that. That's how you can fix that problem. But right now, states are waiting on what, you know, because it costs money to print ballots, right? A lot of money. States are waiting uh, until the right moment in which to start printing ballots. And whether or not Trump is convicted doesn't mean a damn bit to them. They're going to start printing them uh, once, once it's, uh, once it's uh, time to do so. So if we drag our ass on this decision, okay, then we're going to be caught possibly. I mean, I'm, saying, I'm not saying it's definite that he's going to get off. But I'm just saying that there's a chance that he could. And if it's and if he does, you know, you know, we could be looking at, you know, a criminal being put in the in the White House. And if he is convicted and the name is still on the ballot, we could be looking at the possibility of putting a criminal in the. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a no win situation either way you look at it. We're still gonna we'd still end up losing, you know, uh, and getting Biden running for. I mean, uh, getting uh, Trump running for president again. Okay. Uh, not that he would win. I don't think that he would win if it came down to him because I don't think he has enough of a back, uh, you know, a, a foundation of support in order to win another f four years in the White House. I don't think he has it. Okay, he. It sounds like you know because the the few that he does have are making so much stink that it sounds like he has a lot, but he really doesn't. Okay. A lot of people have already given up on him in the Republican Party and have switched to DeSantis. Okay. So the, the party is going to be divided. And if it's already divided before the primary, then that means it's even going to be even more divided by the time they hit to the, the actual uh, main election to, for president. Okay, So I don't think there's enough votes out there for Trump to possibly win uh, as it stands right now. I don't Even if, if the election was held today, he would not win, period. Okay, Biden would beat him all, all across the board. Uh, but what I'm... What my, what my point is, is that on the matter of the ballots, okay, like I said, if that's such a 
big issue with people, then the solution is simple. Just write his fucking name in the ballot. If you want his name there, put his name there and, and put an X next to it. Everyone's going to know who that is. All right? You don't have to wait for the state to put the fucking name there. They give you the option of putting your own name, you know, anybody that you pick. Somebody that, you know, put any name you want in there if you want. It doesn't matter, okay? And if you get enough people writing his name in there, then they're obviously going to take notice of it. But it doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't fucking matter about, you know, oh, if he's feeling guilty, you know, no, no, no. It doesn't matter. The states don't even have to put his name there to begin with. <coughs> Excuse me. Because there's always the, the space at the bottom for a write-in, okay? And that happens sometimes when people that are running, they don't have the, uh, you know, the money or whatever the hell it is that they need to get their name on the ballot. They just put, you know, write it in, okay? Um, and, you know, and, on, and, and also, you know, uh, we could, the, you know, the, the ruling could come down like this to say that uh, if, if we rule, you know, uh, that Trump is guilty, okay, then, then the name that, if, the name, if his name is on the ballot, it's to be struck, okay? No one, we, can, we won't count any vote that's for Donald Trump, okay? Because we, we the courts have already deemed that his name uh, shouldn't be on the ballot, even though it's already printed there, we won't count any ballot with his name on it, okay? Or with an X next to it. It's a very simple fix. There's no reason why to sit here and complain about, oh, we, he hasn't been found guilty yet, and we, he has a right to have his name on there. Well, at the same time, uh, Trump is trying to push this fucking thing out as far as he can, you know, so that way we never come to an answer before the election. That's what he's trying to do. So he's trying to game up the system is what he's doing, you know, stonewalling. Uh, that's his only choice he's got to avoid prison, you know, because if he becomes president, then they can't put him in prison while he's president. They can't. And so uh, that's his goal, is to delay, delay, delay. No matter how much evidence this fucking guy has got hanging over his head like a sword of Damocles, it ain't going to fucking matter. That's the rules we got in this country. If a guy is a, is a fucking, he's got the smoking gun in his hand, he can still be put in the White House because the courts haven't deemed him to be criminal or, you know, or guilty yet. Okay, it's, I know it sounds stupid and twisted and everything, but that's the way it is. And that's why I say it shouldn't be a matter about, you know, such an issue about his name being on the ballot or not. All the states have to do is just say, look, we're not counting his name. If anyone votes for it, it's not going to get, it's not going to get counted. Okay. So, you know, like I said, there's, there's more than one ways to skin a cat when it comes to a situation like that. But there's no precedent. Okay. That's, that's the other part. We don't want to set a precedent in this country that a, that a convicted felon can sit on the, in the White House just because he wasn't convicted in a certain amount of time before he got in there, okay? We don't want to set that precedent because then future presidents are going to try the same goddamn thing, run out the clock so they can avoid a conviction, okay? We want to be able to hold to the, the virtue and the principles of what the founding fathers of this country wanted to see happen. If somebody is a criminal, they cannot be in the fucking White House. I mean, that's pretty much, in the, in the most simplest terms, that's what they were trying to tell us. It doesn't matter what the, how long the courts take or anything. None of that matters. If he's a felon, he shouldn't be in there. And I'm sure they would say, if he's found a felon and he's still in the White House, impeach his ass. Get him out of there. You know, they, they just, it's a way of protecting our democracy by not letting it, not handing it over to the criminals. Okay? That's what they're trying to say. And if you're, and if you're going to play this by the fucking rules and everything, and, and then at the same time circle around the rules and, and bend the rules uh, in order to get your way, then you're not really in the spirit of what the what the system is set up to do, to keep uh, you know bad people out of the out of the government. Okay, uh, I mean I don't know how else to say it, but that's that's really what this is about: keeping bad people out of government. And like I said, the situation with the ballot is an easy fix all the way around. You know, you, you don't have to print his name on there if you don't want to, because they can write it in if they want to vote for him, or if his name is already printed on the ballot and he's con and he's uh, convicted before the election, okay, 
then no no state has any legal obligation to count his name as you know in the election at, at the election at all okay because he he's not supposed to be on the ballot they'll just mark his name off and count uh, the other choices that people put on on their ballots okay but there won't be any count for you know Trump <laughs> all right let's let's go to break we'll be right back This is me. This is me. This is me! This is me. I'm Alex Curtis. I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins. I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. Seen one white supremacist. There's a boogeyman of white supremacy, which I don't think anyone can see. Believe white nationalist things. is racist, Senator. Well. That's your opinion. If Democrats want to say that white nationalists are racist, I'm totally against that too. Stop calling Tommy Tuberville a racist simply because he talked about having white skin and being a nationalist. My amendment has nothing to do with whether or not colored people or black people or anybody can serve. Diversity absolutely means anti-white. Chick-fil-A, I mean... You know, I'm hesitant to make a fried chicken joke, but they sell fried chicken. I don't know how much more inclusive we can get here. The State Board of Education just approved new rules for how to teach black history in public schools. How slaves developed skills, which in some instances could be applied for their personal benefit. This is well documented among historians. This is historical fact that slaves did develop skills while they were enslaved. They're probably going to show um, some of the folks that eventually parlayed, uh, you know, being a blacksmith into into doing things later later in life. Right? I mean, you compare black guys to black guys, women to other really women. You can't compare Soros to another Jewish guy. The Soros back prosecutors, Soros DA. The Soros prosecutor. His master George Soros. Mr. Soros. George Soros. Soros funded DAs. You sit down and think about all the anti-Semitism so-called, so-called, not real, so-called. You had to survive in a concentration yeah. camp by having skills. You had to be useful. The people who are most immune are Ashkenazi Jews and, uh, and Chinese. This guy has a right to say whatever he wants to say, and it, it's not anymore, if you don't agree with me, you can't say it. That is not America. Oh, of course the Jews run Hollywood.
Some people have a deep, abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. And some people don't. People start pollution. People can stop it. Write for Pollution Booklet, Box 1771, Radio City Station, New York. Be a part of the entertainment value of a lifetime. I loved it. It was the best performance I've seen in a lifetime. I loved the show. I liked it very much. He's a very entertaining man. It's well worth the money. Now appearing in Charlottetown, coming to Halifax, November 6th to the 18th, and St. John, November 20th through the 26th. everybody welcome back to the show here. Damn, I look at my desk here enough enough okay um, yeah welcome back so uh, I, I heard here yesterday that uh, the DOJ was uh, fixing to uh, indict Hunter Biden on uh, gun charges this uh, this sometime this month they didn't say specifically but uh, they're they're getting ready to um, and I'm sure this is is all like oh ho, 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 you know for the Republicans really happy about that um, here's the thing though uh, they've been trying to use that Hunter Biden scandal if you want to call it as a way to get back at the Democrats for all the crap that uh, Trump's had to go through to answer for his crimes you know, God forbid that we hold somebody uh, accountable for their actions, okay? Apparently, Republicans, uh, who are usually the people to argue about uh, following the law, uh, are now themselves not wanting to follow the law, okay? Uh, they want to let one of their own get away with some treasonous crimes, stuff that we would hang an ordinary citizen for if they were involved in these things. I mean, if we go, you know, it's, I, I mean, I look at all the spies we've had that, you know, that uh, got caught doing uh, some of the things that uh, Trump was doing, okay? Uh, what was it, Hanson there? The, 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 uh, he died recently in, uh, in prison. Um, Aldrich Ames, I don't know if he's still in there. I, you know, I just... Uh, I'm just thinking, you know, these people who did the same thing for, you know, for money, you know, they got caught and immediately, without much fanfare from the press, you know, got pushed right into the, you know, the uh, justice uh, system there and from there disappeared from our lives. And so at the same time, and, and of course, you know, the, the Republicans were all, all for that, but Hansen was a was a Republican member. I I don't know if how many people know that, but uh, Hansen was a a, a staunch Republican at the time, and he uh, he hated Clinton. He hated Bill Clinton like you wouldn't believe. Okay, um, and he always had a huge big American flag hanging off the front of his house. And at the same time, that son of a bitch was screwing us six ways from Sunday. <laughs> um. And I just, I, you know, I, I wonder how many people actually throw that in the Republicans' face when they talk about, you know, doing the right thing. And here we're trying to do that now with Donald Trump. And they, instead of trying to defend what he did, and in most cases they wouldn't be able to do that, they deflect from that issue onto another issue of Hunter Biden, which is an issue that's really like comparing apples to oranges, okay? His problem of having a gun is like a little tiny, tiny tip of an iceberg where you got Trump's massive iceberg <laughs> in crunch, okay? Why this country should give two shits about what Hunter Biden, how he got his gun, I don't know. But you would think the Republicans would be all for it, 
right? I mean, they're the gun rights nuts, right? They're the ones that tell, well, we should, everybody should have a gun. Well, Hunter got a gun. And these people want to take it away from him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> these people want to take it away from him because he's got a gun. When Republican members are constantly getting guns illegally across the country, and not a single one of them has ever brought to face justice, okay? We always find out these people have guns, and then we find out they didn't, they were not even registered, or they had any anything leading, or any paperwork leading to the sale, illegal sale of the gun. But here, we, Hunter Biden is, is uh, had got himself a gun, and the Republicans are all want to charge him to no end to punish him for that, okay? Because they can't get him on anything else, right? But that's the one thing they're going to go after him on. Hypocrites all, okay? Because they're the first people to to go run defense for a guy like Biden, Hunter Biden, for even having the right. They would say, oh, he has a right as a citizen to own a gun, okay? You got no right to... to charge him or take that away from him. you know that's their that would be their argument but you see what happens okay it all depends on what side of the aisle they stand on whether they're for or against something okay and traditionally if you're if your stand is in the right wing you're always going to be for guns for the nra okay that's always going to be it but if the target you're after happens to be on the side of a democrat okay they're not going to give a shit they're going to go after you and since the, this guy is the son of the president, oh, now you really got a target on you. <laughs> they, they are going to come after you with everything they got. Okay. But um, the, other, the, the other aspect of looking at this problem is this. If they go after Hunter Biden, okay, this month, with the, with the you know, an indictment and charges in court, uh, what happens if he cuts a deal? You know, a plea deal. That would kind of take the Republicans' big uh, talking point right off the table, wouldn't it? Because then the matter would be settled. They couldn't really go after him anymore after that, could they? Because the matter's been settled. You see what I'm saying? The Republicans would no longer have their... Uh, their cannonball, basically, to put in the cannon to fire at, at uh, President Biden anymore. They would be gone. So why would they want to do this? Why would they want to uh, hurry this along and get him uh, in trial? Because if they go ahead and indict him this month, or like they want to do with the DOJ, and he goes and he cuts a, and, and Hunter cuts a deal that, you know, to get out of, to keep out of prison and all that, the Republicans are going to be livid. But guess what? They, they're, they're, the leadership's not going to be able to say anything more about them or attack them anymore about because it's old news. It was yesterday's news. This matter is settled now. You're going to have to find something else to go after uh, President Biden on, and they can't because everything that man has been doing since he became president has been to improve the country from a pandemic, from an economic collapse, okay, from promises that Trump did not keep, Okay, he's been doing everything. The infrastructure promises that, uh, that Trump promised he was going to do to improve the country, he never did. He talked about it every week that he was going to do it, and he never did. He got it done. He got it rolling. He got the ball rolling. So it took a Democrat to make a Republican live up to the promise. <laughs> You know, Democrats got to pull has got to pull the weight of the Republicans because they don't know how to govern. They're, the Republicans are crippled from their own flaws. They're tied. They're tied down basically to, you know, owing this spot, uh, owing this person, owing that person, and taking money from these people. But they're 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 constantly tied down by the interests of outsiders. Okay, they can't make promises about doing anything to the economy because, hey, I'm getting money from this. The banks are on my side. You know, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're, they're tied down all over the place, so they can't really give in on anything. They can't make promises about anything. It all sounds good when they're present, when they're running for the, for the seat, and everybody's clapping and applauding whenever they, they say they're going to do or drain the swamp and all that stuff. Okay, well, Trump was the swamp, okay? And we did drain the swamp. We got rid of him out of the fucking White House, okay? And him and, and, and more people yet to, to go after, okay? But here's the thing. 
they're tied down by all the promises that they make on the people on the outside to the wealthy and stuff and they get more clout than any of you and I because they their palms get greased way better okay and so uh, they can't they can't do anything however the Democrats on the other hand can because they're also getting you know favors from people who want to see some change done okay they got donors coming from the other side and so when the president says he's going to do some infrastructure developments, he's going to bring some microchip factories into the country. Uh, you know, these people, and I think there, you know, some Republican business people were kind of behind Biden on this because, hey, that's money to be made. If we can open up a factory here in the country to build uh, stuff that we're importing from China, which is now costing us way more than it should because of the shipping costs. And the fact that, you know, there's uh, fewer people working, okay, now we can do this and we can do it at a cheaper rate, make better sales, you know, why wouldn't they be in favor of that, okay? Uh, so, like I said, it's just, <coughs> Biden has, has been doing pretty good, okay? And yes, the media is not talking too much about it because we're all focused on what's going to happen to Trump. Everybody wants to know, what's the next thing Trump's going to say? What's the next thing, you know, he's going to do to try to uh, defend himself against all this stuff? Uh, what are his followers saying? What, are their, what, are his, what do his followers uh, think about what's happening to their beloved leader there in their party? You know, there, you know, there's all these questions the press are always hounding everybody about, but I'm not sure that anybody would be that interested in it if it wasn't being thrown in our faces every night. Okay? Because while we're watching that, we're not hearing the stories that we want to really hear because everybody's got a problem, a common denominator, okay? Inflation, you know, prices uh, high at the stores, at the gas pumps. We all ha are, we're all bitching about the same thing at the end of the day. But we're not being allowed to say it because we're too busy talking about partisan bullshit. You know, everybody's talking about Trump and whether we're for or against him, okay? But who's talking about what we're, what are we trying to do here for inflation in this country? What's being done about it? Nobody's, nobody's really asking that question because that's not the topic of the day. Okay, what's being talked about at the water cooler at your job? That's what's put on there. That's the, what I call the gossip, the tabloid gossip that we're all focused on because the media keeps us focused on it. Okay, we shouldn't even really be talking anything more about Trump until the trial begins, okay, and we start hearing things uh, from that. <coughs> At this point, uh, we really shouldn't put that much energy into this guy anymore, okay? He's not the president anymore. He's just a guy, a convicted rapist, who is walking around trying to get, uh, you know, people behind him again. He's trying to commit fraud on his, his voters, his, his supporters, uh, using his his uh, police mugshot <laughs> as a goddamn uh, way to make money off t-shirts and coffee mugs and shit, you know, I mean, who is this fucking guy? <coughs> uh, that's all he's doing right now. Is any of that stuff front page news? No, it's not, okay? But the media puts it there because they know people won't read much further into the newspaper than what's on the headlines or at the front page. Meanwhile, the good stuff is in the back what the president might have done or, you know, or, or is trying to do. You're not going to read that. You're not going to see that. You're not even going to hear it, okay, much less on the TV or on the fucking radio for that matter. You know, you're not going to hear about it. The only way you're going to know is, you know, possibly looking it up online and, and various uh, websites that, you know, go unnoticed for the most part, okay. But the truth is, is still out there, but, you know, you're going to have to be savvy enough to be able to find it. You know, and unfortunately, that means that uh, <clears throat> a lot of us will probably vote against Biden without even really understanding what the man already did accomplish, and that you're go you're still going to the ballot bitching about the same thing, and you probably don't even realize that it's already been taken care of. You just don't know it. <laughs> okay, uh, so you know you don't want to be the idiot that goes and does something like that, and then you find out <clears throat> later that oh, the next president just undid something that Biden did, and you didn't even know about it because <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't think Biden had done that. You know, so <laughs> you know you don't want to be caught like that.
because then you look like the fool. You got egg all over your face because you went and voted against a guy thinking he didn't accomplish something, but he did, but you were too busy listening to the other bullshit gossip that was going on in Washington, D.C. and not caring about anything that, you know. Too many people make that mistake, okay? They find out after the fact. You know, I, I remember my father falling into that trap a lot of times. I mean, he would vote Democrat, okay? But then uh, he would watch things <clears throat> on the History Channel about what past presidents had done. And he's like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, he did this, he did... You know, and I'm thinking, well, Jesus, <laughs> you live those days. <laughs> you know, uh, he didn't know. He also didn't know much about what was going on in the Nixon White House at the time. He he don't he doesn't even realize how close we came to World War III under Ronald Reagan. Okay, uh, after he was shot, we came that close to launching nukes against Russia over a mistake because Russia was doing uh, maneuvers and we were picking that up as they were on the offensive against us and we were about ready to launch nukes at that country. But. For some reason, the, the the message got lost because everybody was so, oh, Reagan, Reagan, you know. Um, they didn't know what the hell was going on, you know. And the Russians were, they were laughing. <laughs> they couldn't believe that we fell for, for a stupid gag like that. You know, even though we had satellites and everything, you know, and all that, that shit, we, the computers that we have in there, they were reading it all as actual stuff, and it wasn't. It was just the Russians doing maneuvers, okay, in preparation for a war, World War III, but they were not going to do a World War III. It was just maneuvers, and they we were supposed to have already known that, okay? But somewhere the message got lost, and they all thought it was for real. And we almost got went to war that day, okay? Nobody, not many people in this country even even remember that, okay? That under the Reagan administration, we, we came that close to a fucking World War III here, okay? And maybe... And maybe that wasn't the only time under his administration when we did, but that was certainly the closest. A lot of the people said that was the closest we ever come to actually pushing all the buttons because nobody could find where the football was because when uh, they had it, when they took Reagan to the hospital and they lost a chain of custody, so we were trying to find the goddamn football. So if the Russians did launch at us, we wouldn't have been able to fire back because the thing was somewhere out there. Okay, so they were trying to track down the goddamn football. <laughs> Okay, meanwhile, there was fighting going on in the White House that who was the next in chain of command? Okay, was it the vice president or the speaker? That they, Nobody knew, okay? Nobody was even up to date on what the hell, because, you know, uh, the transition of power was had been changed in 1960-something, whatever the hell it was, and they all forgot about it, okay? They all forgot about it. So they, they were trying to put uh, uh, Bush as the next in line, but he couldn't go in next in line because that wasn't the way it went anymore, okay? So at that time, uh, what the hell was his name now? I can't, he's the one that says, oh, I'm in charge, you know? You know, that's his famous line, which got him removed awful quick. But anyway, the Speaker of the House, he was the next in line, okay? He was the next in line at that time to take the, take the seat. But... There was people going through books and going through fucking law books. And, you know, they, nobody was nobody knew for sure what the hell to do. That's how fucking disorganized it was. OK, that's how fucking disorganized it was. And like I said, you know, we got we have this problem going on now where people aren't even aware of what president is doing when he's doing something good. They're not even aware of it. And that's thanks to the press. You know? They don't follow up on these things. They don't ask the president or interview him and say, we saw that you passed this, and how is that working out for you? Well, that's boring talk. Nobody wants to hear, blah, 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 you know, numbers and figures. They don't want to hear that. What they want to hear is who is this guy screwing now, okay? Is he in bed with this lady? Is he stealing money from this guy? This is what draws people because crime sells. I mean, look, cops. You got all these damn mafia movies and you know, uh, and all the shit that's being made because they know people love it. They love to watch that stuff. They love these crime dramas and shit. You know, Law and Order, uh, SVU, you know, all these fucking these shows you got. They sell because Americans love it. The media sees that. They focus all their press on the bad guy because he's the guy everybody wants to hear from. All right. <laughs> 
So, like I said, it's, it's a sad state of affairs in our country when we're like that at this point. But it shows why things are happening the way they are and why Biden is going to have to get his people out there in the forefront and tell them, look, say something, talk, you know, tell these people about what I'm doing and what's going on. Let these people hear, you know, get me some fucking airtime. Put me on someplace, you know, do something got to try you know jesus i mean what you i mean who's it gonna hurt to brag a little bit about your accomplishments other you know because the only way people are going to know is if they go online and they look at a, a list of things that he's accomplished who's, how many people are going to do that okay how many all right so anyway that's it for today and i hope everybody has a great uh, upcoming week so please subscribe comment keep your ears open on covid19 and uh, treat each other nice out there don't don't try not to make waves that you're going to regret, okay? Things always seem to come back at you when you do something bad, so don't, don't even play around with that. So, take care, everybody.